Hey everyone, it's Bijal here on my regular Tuesday Live. I have got an exciting topic to discuss with you. Um, I've been thinking a lot about how to explain exactly what a business or a company projects out into the marketplace. And I felt like this analogy that I came up with was really spot on. And um, so I'm excited to share that with you today. Uh, I would love to get your feedback. If you have questions or something pops to mind, uh, say hey to me in the comments. Let me know you're here. Um, we're going to dive right into it. So the question I have for today uh, for you to ask yourself is, are you the Walmart or are you the Nordstrom's of your business? And I think a lot of us B2B businesses, meaning business to business or somebody who's providing services, feels like we're exempt from the notion that we don't have to compete at the retail level. That that's for retail, for e-commerce, but we're going to be known by our reputation, by our service, by what we perceive is our brand because we're delivering a certain type of value. So got a few more people logged on here. Say hey to me. I'm going to say hey to Tracy who's on here. So if you missed the beginning, we are talking about, um, and I'm asking each person to, and let me know in the comments. Let me know. Be honest with yourself. Right now with where your business is positioned, how you are branded, how you are showing up, are you the Nordstrom's or are you the Walmart of the marketplace? And uh, the first thing we're going to get into and to understand the difference is we're going to go into a story, go into an example. So let's pretend you all want to buy a new set of sheets for your home. You decide, okay, my two choices are Nordstrom's or Walmart. So you walk into Walmart, you go into the sheets section, um, you know, maybe the, the lighting is kind of really like brightly on and it's very cool colored. Um, you have a hard time finding it. You have a hard time finding a salesperson to show you where the bedding is. You finally find it and you stumble it on your own and there is a bunch of sheets and you have already, as you've entered the store, have a perception of what the cost is going to be. So you already know entering into Walmart that you might spend a clean 20 buckaroos on getting a sheet set, queen size, a fitted sheet and a flat sheet. Maybe it'll be 20 bucks. Maybe you go to the higher end of Walmart and then you get the 30 bucks section. But you are fully convinced before you even see the product, what the price is going to be. And that's because Walmart has done a good job of calibrating who their market is, who their audience is exactly, and make sure that they provide the quality and the level of products to support that customer's appetite. So you take those sheets home, you wash them, you use them on the bed and they're kind of like scratchy and they're maybe it's a nice design, it seemed like from the cover, but they're not nearly as soft as you thought and you're kind of hot. And then after a month, you're like, man, I really didn't like these sheets, but oh well, I know I went to Walmart, so this is what was, this is what I was expecting. So let's take this in a different context. Let's imagine you went to Nordstrom's and you went to shop. You walk into the mall, you walk into the store, you immediately get a sense and a fragrance. They already have their retail area spread out really nicely. You know by having gone to Nordstrom's, bedding is always on the third floor because they want you to walk by all of the expensive jewelry and watches and uh, women's clothing section. You get all the way up to the third floor. The bedding section is very obvious. The light is warm, so you feel like it's comfortable to the eye. And there is enormous displays of like king size beds, of, um, of queen size beds with rugs underneath and lamps and like 50,000 throw pillows. And you already knew walking into Nordstrom's, as soon as that Nordstrom scent hit you, you were like, I'm gonna at least spend 200 bucks on these sheets. These sheets are going to be Egyptian cotton. They might be like 1100 thread count, but 
I know that I'm going to get something that wows me. I'm going to get something that I wasn't expecting that I would see. Um, I know I can trust that Nordstrom's is going to tell me what do I need to buy? What is my style? What do I like? They're going to come in and tell me. So if you're joining in right now, we're talking about businesses as a brand and are you the Nordstrom's or are you the Walmart? I'm asking you to be honest with yourself, just where are you right now? Drop it in the comments, are you the Walmart or the Nordstrom's and, or just say, hey, if you're not ready to share that, that's fine. Um, you probably know in your heart where you're at. And it's 100% fine to be like wanting to be the Nordstrom's and still be at the Walmart. So say hey to Rares. Nice to uh, nice to have you on here. Hi Jesse, good to see you. Uh, Rares is <laughs> is owning the fact that he's from Walmart. So that's all good, man. Um, you know we all have to start somewhere. And so you get into Nordstrom's, and all of this to say they have mapped out that customer journey. This is no different than your business and when somebody's landing on your page, when somebody is interested in your offer, when someone's thinking about responding to your two step. They are processing and their subconscious is processing, is this person the Walmart or are they the Nordstrom's and what can I expect? What that means is perceived value. There is a perception of value. So like I said, the moment you walked into Walmart, you couldn't find anything, you knew it was gonna be about 20 bucks, 30 bucks if you're feeling fancy. You also knew you weren't gonna get the product that you were really hoping for, but it might be a good Band-Aid for the situation. You walk into Nordstrom's, it's a completely different experience. You know you're going to be led to understand what you love. You know you're going to come home with a product that is probably in the $200 to $300 range, but you know it's going to blow your mind. You know it's going to exceed your expectations, and you also can sit confidently to know if this product does not work, if the Nordstrom promise doesn't work for me, they have basically adopted the Ritz-Carlton customer service approach, they will take it back. No questions asked. It doesn't matter if it's been 90 days. No, you don't need your receipt. No, you don't need your original form of payment. And not only are you going to get it back, they're going to help you in any way possible to figure out what your problem was and to solve it with a better offer or just to politely give you your money back in the form of a gift card or cash or whatever their recent policy is. That's a guarantee. That's a guarantee that you might be spending more initially, but the perceived value of what you're getting out of it is the results you were expecting. So that leads me into the second point. It's the expectation of quality and how that translates into trust. So as soon as I said that, like buying sheets from Walmart or Nordstrom's, you can feel and see the difference, even if you're not the shopper in the family. Imagine, okay, if you're if you're coming from a different perspective, imagine buying a watch, right? You can buy like, uh, you know, a cheap watch from Walmart and they have digital ones and they have the normal ones and all of that, or you can go to Nordstrom's to buy a watch. Uh, you know you're gonna see different, different brands there. I can't even think of it like Sokio or what is it called? I don't know, Timex. I don't know. I don't even remember. But like when you're little and you're at Walmart and you find those like $10 watches or $5 watches that usually the battery breaks by the time you get home. So you've got that type of watch or you go to Nordstrom's where you can expect a completely different luxury line of watches, something that screams exclusive, something that screams luxury, something that says that you've like elevated and you're at a different elite level. Um, so you know that difference and you also know the price tag that comes with it. You know at Walmart you can get away with a $10 watch, at Nordstrom you're looking at 500 and more, maybe a thousand. If there's diamonds on it, you know that's possible when you go to Nordstrom's. Um, so there's that expectation of quality and then there's the there's the inside feeling of trust. And the very last thing that affects it all and wraps it all together and kind of puts this beautiful bow on it is the influence of the higher quality product and where they position themselves as the leader. So having that influence completely affects the sales cycle. People come into your product, right? Let's take it home now, into your business they know you're the Nordstrom's, so they know that you have perceived value. They know they can expect quality. They know they can trust you. And now on top of everything else, they believe you're the influencer 
on what they should do, what they should select, and why. Like all of the things, everything to make you happy afterward, they're taking that on for you. So you kind of go into it already warmed up with the with the hope and the expectation of what you're getting out of it. And so that's the major difference in terms of business and what you end up coming out of it. There is literally a cognitive bias towards having an elevated brand that is positioned well, designed well, and is completely crystal clear on who the market they are and what they're serving. Versus the other position where I see so many businesses floundering in is unsure of who the ideal client is or worse, know who the ideal client is but can't reach them and are confused as to why. And they can't reach them because they're showing up as the Walmart of the world and they're hoping for the Nordstrom clientele to walk through. So that doesn't make sense, right? Like when you imagine a person, Susie, and she wants to go buy sheets, she's not thinking, am I gonna go to Walmart and then I'll go to Nordstrom's. Those aren't, those aren't anywhere on the same radar. Same is happening for your business. So when you're finding yourself in the position where you're not at the offer level you wanna be at, your existing clients are not as sophisticated as you'd like them to be. And lastly, you're not able to deliver as much value as you want for the offer and the amount that you should be delivering it because you are stuck in this loop of fulfilling at a high rate of fulfillment, lots of your one-on-one -on -one time, lots of your hours, but actually at the end, your avatar and your client is not ready, is not ready for a Nordstrom style service. So that's the biggest thing I see is in the comparative advantage of how you can position yourself and that how you can lead your people to have expectations of what your business is. And so this translates over really well over to service businesses and everything lines up really nicely so that you can understand exactly what makes the difference between why aren't you attracting those Nordstrom clientele. And I, take, I ask you to take a look at yourself and say, am I showing up as the Walmart or the Nordstrom? So um, yeah, let me know. Uh, say hey if you're here um, and uh, let me know if you have any questions as always. Um, I'm just always on here on Tuesdays because I want to come on here and I wanna bring on really important topics that I see some of the clients or prospects that I talk to getting stuck at. So they're awesome at what they do yet they don't have the creative eye and that just that creative left brain, right brain, like business design strategy. They don't have the whole picture to understand how do I position myself? Um, and what that does is it lands you somewhere where you're not clear. And when you're not clear or you don't look elevated, you're not attracting those people. It's not gonna happen. You could have like the best results in the world, the best reviews, and most of your client traffic will be warm referrals from other people. They won't be cold traffic. They won't be people responding. They'll be people skipping over your organic. So uh, Tracy is saying I'm somewhere in between and striving for the Nordstrom's, which is really common. You know, I mean, low ticket is like 300 bucks, 1,000 bucks. That's low ticket on Facebook. Somewhere in between is like 3,000 to 5,000 is like you're in between. Um, I've seen some people actually think that 3,000 to 5,000 was high ticket. And I just was like a little bit baffled. And I said, well, why? Like, what, where did you come up with this number? And a lot of times it's just a lack of knowledge or lack of network, not knowing the difference between when I'm positioning myself at $3,000 and I think I'm competing with $300. Yeah, absolutely. You're going to feel like the big wig. You feel like the big ticket offer. You feel like, man, look at me go. Until you realize there's a world out there competing at 9,000, 10,000, 15, 20, or on residual months, retainer months. And then suddenly you're not in the same, you're not in the same camp anymore. So I think a part of being able to change and understand, you know, where are you at is having that concept of competitive advantage. So you want to be able to use that in every way. 
Um, so my challenge to you is to take this next week, working forward, looking forward and say, what is something that I can embody? What is one thing I can embody from a Nordstrom's or even a Ritz Carlton like experience um, or a positioning or the way I show up that I don't currently do now? And I want you to let me know what your ideas are and tell me what difference that made. Because I promise that if you start showing up differently, you're gonna start attracting different people. So that's what I have for you today. Um, I'm open to taking any questions. If you guys have it, let me know in the comments um, and I'm happy to expound on this. And if we don't have any questions, I'm going to wrap it up from here. Um, and I hopefully I've made a lot of people in the mood to go buy some sheets. <laughs> but uh, I thought this was just something to help you uh, move along further and to take a real hard look at where you're at and what are the blocks that are preventing you from where you should be and where you could be going. So, okay, I don't see any questions in the comments. Again, let me know later what your challenges are and uh, I look forward to hearing from you again. Okay, take care, happy Tuesday. Go be the Nordstroms, peace.